Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking. That is the Neverfull MM in the Damia Ben canvas. Uh, and I also want to let you guys know there might be a lot more uh, cuts throughout this video only because as you can tell I sound super nasally or I'm on the verge of getting sick I just know it and my throat is absolutely killing me so I just thought I'd let you know um, that way if, <laughs> if you see the cuts I know it might be annoying but again I just wanted to, to let you know and just bear with me <laughs> I will try my hardest to get through the video um, but if not now you know why <laughs> so let's get started with the very first question from Heather Wellborn I don't know much about the history about Louis Vuitton. Do you know how the Speedy got its name? Just curious. I think this is an awesome question, especially because a lot of you know that I'm always uh, I'm always fascinated with you know the history be behind these fashion houses, and I thought that the best way to answer this is with a. Uh, you know, from a part of a book, which I also want to share with you, uh, verbatim. So that way you know exactly where the name came from. Uh, all right. So it says, in 1930, in the wake of the Keepall's global success, Louis Vuitton decided to create a smaller version, which it baptized the Express. Destined to become a handbag, its name recalls the passion for fast-paced living illustrated by the streamlined cars of the period and the first American appliances imported by the Allies after World War I. So after that, it was called uh, the Speedy. So it first was called the Express, then it came to be the Speedy. But the reason why I wanted to read it verbatim from a book is because I think that this is an awesome, uh, an awesome read, and it came from this book right here, which is the Louis Vuitton City Bags: A Natural History. You can get this on the Louis Vuitton website. I do believe it retails for one hundred and thirty dollars. However, you can get it on Amazon, and I think. That's where I got mine. I think I paid mm, maybe 30 bucks, $40. Don't quote me on it. Maybe it was 50. <laughs> I can't remember, but it was nowhere near $130. But if you, uh, if you are like me and you're interested in the history and you want to read up a little bit more about the brand, this is an awesome read. As I mentioned earlier, it is a very thick book. Um, and it has so much, I mean, just so many beautiful illustrations and it tells you how they construct the handbag. There's just so, so much. It gives you uh, the history on the colors as well. It's just, I cannot stress how awesome this book is. So uh, that's why I wanted to read it from there so that way you guys know verbatim uh, from Louis Vuitton how uh, the Speedy got its name. So hopefully that was able to help. Uh, and if I can, I'll find uh, the link and put it on the description box below. But if not, just check out Amazon on to the books and then go to uh, Louis Vuitton City Bags and it should be able to pop up. But awesome book. Uh, all right, next question from Amber E and Amy L. They had uh, similar questions. What is the best way to sell? Do you sell your bags on your own or do you use some kind of app? Poshmark, for example. Also, what do you think is a reasonable price for brands like Kate Spade, Michael Kors, and Coach? They are, they are all in excellent condition. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Consigning tips as well. Um, okay, so what is the best way to sell? If you're going to sell yourself, I've never used this, uh, this, um, this platform, but a lot of people uh, are very, um, they give a lot of positive feedback using TradeZ, especially because TradeZ has a really great system put into place when it comes to selling, and they also back their sellers. So again, I've never used them, but a lot of people have had great success selling their items. Uh, and do I sell my, my handbags on my own? I do. I used to use... Um, eBay, I mean, a million years ago, I stopped using them only because there were so many issues. Uh, you get a ton of lowball offers and it just, it left a really bad taste in my mouth. I know now they have implemented a lot of different, um, a lot of different uh, things. So that way, if you are buying pre loved it's a little bit more, it's a little bit safer to, to buy from them. But I think I'm still apprehensive because of the bad experiences that I have. So uh, now I end up selling my items on my uh, on my sale Instagram page, which is Luxury Love. Um, it's been some time since I've sold some items on there because I've, I've been a little preoccupied with a few other things. Uh, but I have been doing... Um, I have been doing private sales as well, but that's where I end up uh, selling my items, and I always give a ton of you know information and whatnot. Uh, and what it, what do I think is a reasonable price for brands like Kate Spade and Michael Kors and Coach? I think when it comes to selling your handbags, whether it's Michael Kors, Coach, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, whatever it is, the best way or what I like to do is that I like to go on to different websites, whether it's um, 
whether it's Tradesy, uh, eBay, Fashion File, Yogi's, and I try to kind of compare my item, the condition that it's in, to other items, just to kind of have an idea as to what they're selling for. And I'll be honest with you guys, if you are new to selling your items, sometimes it'll be gut-wrenching, absolutely devastating to see how much your item it ends up selling for, uh, especially when you know how much you ended up paying. Uh, and I've, that's kind of what I talked about before in the very beginning when I ended up selling uh, some of my other handbags. Uh, I, I mean, I know how much I paid, I know how much they were worth, and when I would go to sell them, it was like a 75% difference from what from what I originally paid. So it, <laughs> it is gut-wrenching, and I think that's why I, um, I'm a little bit more selective on what I end up adding to my collection now, only because of what I've gone through in the past. Uh, and what's so the reasonable pricing, um, again, just I like to compare different things. And I also have to say that when you go to price your items, look at it from a buyer's perspective. Put yourself in the buyer's shoes. Would you pay that price for that item? And I also have to say, you have to be extremely thorough with the description of the item. You wanna say absolutely everything. If there's a scratch, if there's a mark, if there's this, whatever it is, the last thing anyone wants to see when they open up their package is be surprised by the condition that it's in. You wanna make sure that you uh, describe absolutely everything to go into massive detail. That's what I end up doing um, on my uh, on my other on my Instagram page on my other Instagram page, I will go <laughs> into such detailed you know if there's a smell if there's this if there whatever it is uh, you know because I don't want someone to say this this wasn't described that you know this this is ridiculous or whatever it is uh, so again I try to put yourself in the sell in the buyer's shoes would you sell it for that price what would you what would you look for would you end up buying it from someone if it was that price, if it had this description, if it had that wear. Uh, and I think that's the, that's the fairest thing to do. And of course, not wanting to overprice something, you know, just because it was a limited edition item or anything like that. I know some websites do that, don't get me wrong, but I think fair is fair. And uh, <laughs> again, put yourself in the buyer's shoes. Now, when it comes to consigning, some websites uh, either end up doing a uh, buy outright or they'll do the consigning. And when consigning comes into place, uh, I like to think of the consignment fees as convenience fees, only because when you consign something to someone else, they have to go through the hoops, they have to go through the emails, they have to go through all of, uh, you know, all of that entire process of selling. Uh, so that's why I call it convenience fee and you just have to sit back and just, uh, you know, wait for your funds. Uh, so they will end up taking either, some places take a large cut, some places are a little bit better, but for the most, uh, for the most part, you have to keep that in the back of your mind that they are going to make a, they, they need to make a profit off your items. Now, some websites also do, uh, like the buyout program where you just sell your item. It'll be a lot less, but you don't have to think twice about it. They'll say, we'll offer you a thousand dollars for this bag. And then that's it. You get the thousand dollars and you're on your merry way. Whereas with consigning, you have to wait for the, for the, for the money and you have to wait, you know, for them to sell the item and to go through all the, uh, to go through all the, the hoops, if you will, as I mentioned earlier. So there are a little, uh, there are different ways to go about it. If you just want to sell your item outright, you don't want to think twice about it. Then the buyout program is something that I recommend. If you want to make a little bit more money and you want to use a consign, a uh, consignment shop, then that would be the best route. But sometimes I feel that selling your items yourself, you end up getting the most money for it. Uh, obviously, because you don't have to pay a third fee. You don't have to pay anything else. It's just you and the and the potential buyer. Uh, so in that case, I would go through um, through Tracy, as I mentioned, a lot of people say that, or uh, eBay. And <laughs> if you do eBay, then I wish you all of the luck. Uh, only, again, because I had such a bad experience. But uh, again, I'm really happy that they have implemented so many different rules and regulations so that people feel more comfortable when they are buying on eBay. So I do love that. Uh, so hopefully that was able to help. <clears throat> uh, all right, next question from Cindy Cochran. Can you talk... Can you talk about a few of the best pre-love websites? As a novice, I'm just not sure where to find a reputable seller to buy from. I get this uh, question asked a lot. This one and the one that I just answered. Uh, there are three websites that, um, two, two mostly that I recommend over anyone else. They are Yogi's Closet. I know some people say Yogi's Closet. I could be wrong. I could be butchering the name. <laughs> Yogi's Closet, Fashion File, and The Real Real. Uh, so the way that I would rate them... Um, 
I think that the uh, Yogi's Closet and Fashion File have amazing customer service. So does uh, The Real Real. When it comes to pictures and going in depth, I think that Yogi's Closet gives you a lot more pictures. They end up taking a lot more, um, a lot more angles of the bag that you want, that you want, that you're interested in. So I do, I love that aspect about them. Fashion File also gives you quite a few pictures. I think Yogi's Closet gives you a little bit more. Uh, but both of those two companies, if there's something on, you know, that you see in the picture, if there's something in the description that doesn't sound right to you, you can call them up and they'll be more than happy to go into more depth. They'll send you more pictures. So I love, I absolutely love their customer service. Now, the real real ends up being a little bit less expensive than the other two, but they only end up giving you so many pictures, and uh, sometimes they'll list it as great or very good or excellent condition, but it still has notable wear. So sometimes the wear isn't isn't really in line with the price <laughs> that you want for the that you're that they're asking for the item uh but again those three websites uh, i know that the real real is uh the newest out of the three but they have really made a name for themselves and they offer a lot of different um they offer a lot of different items but whether you go through yogi's fashion file or the real real they have a crazy amount a crazy amount of items available uh they have anything from uh birkins to classic flaps to louis vuitton speedies and you just everything in between some of them have shoes uh jewelry and they just have such an array of different items available uh on the pre-love market so i will make sure and put their names down below that way if you want to check them out uh i i strongly suggest that and uh, uh, the only the only bad thing for me with Fashion File is that because they're also in Southern California, uh, if I do end up getting something from them, I end up having to pay taxes. Whereas if you end up uh, buying out of state, you don't have to pay taxes. So therefore, the savings are a lot greater. Uh, so <laughs> so it ends up cutting into the savings for me to go through Fashion File. That's why sometimes I end up going through Yogi's Closet, or I used to, uh, because they are in Washington State and I don't have to pay taxes. So I thought I would mention that as well. But great, great question. Uh, all right, next one from Norel Cor Cordiner. Uh, what do you think of the Palm Springs backpacks? I love my MM. Have you ever thought about purchasing the Monte Carlo jewelry case? Uh, so what do I think about the Palm Springs backpack? Uh, I think that it is such a great bag, especially because it is so carefree. You don't have to worry about any type of patina. You don't have to worry about water stains or anything like that. And it ends up fitting quite a lot, whether you have the smallest version or whether you have the largest version, it ends up uh, fitting quite a bit uh, in there. And I also have to say, because it is such a popular handbag, because it is such a popular popular silhouette, whether you go for the smaller one or the large one, the uh, resale value for these items is through the roof. It ends up holding its resale value because of its popularity. Uh, personally, it's not for me only because I have had backpacks in the past. And when I end up putting them on my shoulder, sometimes I feel like I have to keep my shoulders up. Some, I find it a little uncomfortable. I don't know why. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, <laughs> like a duck or a, a dragon. <laughs> moving its its shoulders up, but it, I find it uncomfortable to put it on one shoulder. Uh, I'm not too crazy about putting it, you know, on my back as a backpack, but that's just me only because again, I've had other backpacks in the past, but I appreciate them. I think they are, they are so, so cute. And again, they hold their resale value very well because of their popularity. Now, when it comes to the Monte Carlo jewelry case, I, <laughs> I have been intrigued by this and I will put a link to what it looks like down below. Uh, hopefully that helped out last week when I ended up linking um, the eye candy so that way you guys don't have to go search for it. You can just click it and it takes you directly to it. Uh, but the Monte Carlo jewelry case, I love it because you have a place for your earrings, for your bracelets, and it's all in a nice little case. Whether or not I would end up purchasing it or adding it to my collection, a time will only tell, uh, but I think it's great. Uh, so it's just one of those, it's just one of those items, one of those extra items that Louis Vuitton makes that is just oh so cute. <laughs> all right, next question from Sarah Brosseau. I just got my first Neverfull MM in Damia Ben, and it was made in France. Ah, congratulations! I was wondering how long it takes for the purse to fully take shape after being stored in the box with the bottom creased. What is the best way for me to help the bag take its shape? Awesome question. Um, the best thing would be to definitely stuff the bag as quickly as possible, whether it's with air paper. I know sometimes people end up using... Um, 
towels or clothing just for the f first couple of days so that it could take its shape. Uh, and then after that, once you start using it, once you start putting your items in there, the same weight from your items will end up making the creases go away. Sometimes it takes anywhere from, I'd say maybe five days to a week for the creases to, to fully come off. Uh, some might be a little bit more stubborn, but again, being able to stuff it as soon as you get it with air paper, with any type of, uh, any type of, uh, any items in the, in the bag to keep it shape when you're not using it is the best way to go. And that's another thing that I have to say that, uh, whenever you don't use your handbags, all of my handbags in the back are stuffed. Um, because I want them to maintain their shape as well. So I feel that that ends up helping them out the best. And uh, I will go one step further by, um, by recommending air paper because air paper doesn't add weight to the bag. Uh, it doesn't add weight to the bag, but it still lets it contain its shape. So um, that's what I would recommend doing. And you can find air paper, um, you can find it at uh, Staples. Um, I know I end up buying some of mine on Amazon as well, just because they have <laughs> they have a uh, really great, uh, really great pricing. So that's another place that I would recommend. Um, uh, to, to go for. All right, next question from DJLJB. I'm looking to get the Keepall 45 in Damia Ben, but I'm afraid it would get stolen at the airport if I had to check it. Do you think getting the Mon Mono would be a deterrent? This is an awesome question, and I do have some eye candy. Uh, this is the Keepall 45 Damia Ben in the bandolier, and it does have my little luggage tag there uh, that I hot stamped with the, uh, <laughs> with the baby pink, only because I like the combination. Anyways, uh, now I actually think it would be the opposite. I don't think it would be a deterrent only because I feel that the Louis Vuitton monogram uh, canvas is a lot more noticeable. It would end up attracting a lot more attention only because it is such, it is, it is so well known. Uh, and anyone that knows Louis Vuitton, we all know that this is Demi Ben, we know Demi Azur, and we all, we know the different prints, but I feel that whether someone has Louis Vuitton in their collection, whether they appreciate the brand or not, I feel that the Louis Vuitton monogram is a lot more noticeable. So, um, I, if you want to, I feel like this is not as, this doesn't scream Louis Vuitton as much as, um, as the monogram. So hopefully that was able to help. But again, I feel that the Damien Ben would actually be, uh, the safest way to go. If you don't want, if, if you want that peace of mind, uh, that would, that's what I would end up uh, recommending. I can't, I can't even talk today to save my life either. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question from Prim Kim Seven. What Louis Vuitton items would you recommend as the best pre-love deals? Pre-love price much less than purchasing as new. I actually think I did. Um, I'm not. That's sad that I don't even remember. I did a video on uh, on best pre-loved items, and I will put it on the description box below. That way you can check it out. Uh, but like I said in last week's video, some of the best pricing that you can get if you are interested in a colored. Um, in a colored bag, whether it's Vernie or Epi, then the pre-love market is a great way to be able to find those at such a great price. So sometimes they retail for $23.50, uh, $3,000, and on the pre-love market, you can find them for anywhere from half to 75 off of the retail price. Of course, it all depends on the wear that they have. So if you're interested, again, in getting a colored bag in Vernie or Epi, then that's the best way to go. Another item that I'd have to say is one of the, the best ways to get pre-loved, and at such a great price, are the keep balls. Whether you go for the 45, uh, the 50, the 55, the 60 is actually the one that ends up being, um, that ends up having the best price on the pre-love market only because the size 60 is not cabin friendly. So that's something that you end up having to, um, having to put down below. Uh, but the keep balls, they, they range anywhere, the bandolier especially, uh, they range anywhere from 17, 1700, 1750. And on the pre-love market, you can find them for 900, uh, 800, $700. So $1,000 off the retail price. And uh, sometimes you don't even end up having to pay uh, taxes on top of that, which is another added bonus. So I would have to say that, again, the colored bags or uh, keep balls are by far some of the best items that you can get on the pre-love market for a fantastic, fantastic price. Uh, all right, next question from Suzanne Hall. What are your thoughts on Louis Vuitton Epi leather? I haven't heard you mention it much. I would love to add a zippy coin purse in the in Epi to my collection, but I'm wondering if the lighter colors are prone to color transfer. I gave up the idea of Vernie because I've heard too I heard too many horror stories about color transfer on it. Uh, yes. Yeah, so what are my thoughts on Epi leather? Uh, as I've mentioned before, I don't really give it as much credit as it should. It's a lot more. Um, 
It's a lot more carefree than other items in a sense, and I will get to that in just a second. Uh, it's a lot more carefree and it's a lot more durable than some of the other uh, than some of the other uh, leathers that they have because it also has that texture to it, those ridges that add to how durable it is. So it's a little bit more scratch resistant than other items as well. However, when it comes to the lighter colored uh, epi epi pieces, they are also prone to uh, to color transfer, and I'll have to say that those same ridges that add to to its durability actually end up adding to how it looks when it does have that color transfer. It ends up creating a shadow. It ends up making it look a little bit darker because of those ridges. Uh, so it's, you know, again, it, it's kind of, um, it, it's kind of a catch-22 because it's such a beautiful item. It's, it's carefree in a sense. And, um, it holds its shape very, very well, especially over the years. Uh, but, Again, if you want to go for something a little bit lighter, then they are prone to color transfer, just like everything else. So it is a bummer, but I definitely don't give uh, Epi Leather as much credit as it should. All right, next question from Kyle Cheeseman. How do you feel about the iPhone Folio and the new iPhone case based off the Petite Melee? Uh, all right, so let's start off with the iPhone Folio first. I think it's a very cute SLG. I appreciate it, especially if you want to carry uh, some cash, some credit cards, and have your phone, and not necessarily want to carry a big handbag or anything like that. You can just go and run errands uh, with nothing else. So I appreciate it for that for that aspect. Uh, personally, it's not for me, only because I feel that with any type of phone case from any fashion house, the minute that you end up buying it, there is a type of countdown. There's a type of clock. There's an expiration date to it. And what I mean by that is that if you're the type of person that ends up keeping your phone for three, four, five years, then it ends up working out and ends up paying for itself. Um, the more that you use it. But when you, what I meant by the, the countdown is that if you're the type of person that ends up uh, upgrading your phone every year or every other year, you can only use it for a certain amount of time. Uh, so uh, they don't have the best resale value, but when I, I feel that when it comes to this particular small leather good, the resale value doesn't necessarily play too big of a part only because you will end up using it quite a bit. So it'll end up paying for itself. I feel that, uh, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, if you end up having your phone for quite a few years, then obviously the cost per wear is a lot less than if you were to um, than if you were to upgrade your phone constantly. So uh, when you go to sell it, you won't get anywhere near what you ended up paying for it again because you have to find someone that has that exact um, phone model uh, or anything like that. So uh, it's like I said before, it's not for me, but I do appreciate it because it is a very convenient way uh, to go uh, you know to go run errands and to have just the essentials that you need with you. Uh, now, when it comes to the iPhone case that looks like the Petite Melee, I saw this in person. I wish I had a picture to share with you guys. It is absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. And I will make sure and put the link on the description box below so you guys can check it out. However, <laughs> it has an insane, insane price tag. I believe it's like $1,000. Uh, so I think about it a few different ways. Number one, the case is more than the phone that I'm trying to protect. <laughs> that I'm trying to protect. So it's not for me. Uh, like I said, I do appreciate it because it is absolutely gorgeous, but it is more expensive than the phone that I'm trying to protect. Also, when it comes to cases, whether it's the iPhone folio or this particular case, I am the worst. I showed you guys last week, if you watched my What's in My Bag, this case I bought from Amazon for like $1.50 or $2.50 off, um, like I said, from Amazon. And I... <laughs> It, I have beat it to, <laughs> to a pulp. I have dropped it so many times. I have so many scratches on it, but kind of like small leather goods, when it comes to cases, I don't want to think twice about them. I don't want to think of how many scratches it has or, uh, you know, the type of wear that it's getting. So when it comes to that particular iPhone case, it is, uh, it's just beautiful. I mean, I remember my jaw dropped when I saw it at the boutique, uh, but I wouldn't want anything to happen to it. I wouldn't want it to get scratched. I'd kind of want to keep it in a little glass case because it's, that, it's seriously, I think it's that pretty, uh, but it's just not that functional. It's just not, it's not for me. Uh, again, probably because I am so rough with all of my iPhone cases. So kudos to anyone that has it. It is 
absolutely stunning. Uh, but it's not for me only because I, I, I would be devastated with the first nick that it got, the first scratch. God forbid I ended up dropping it on the ground and it ended up cracking. I, I would be heartbroken, especially with that price tag. So it's not for me, but I do appreciate the beauty of them. All right, next question from Laura Greenfield. Are there any Tiffany & Co. items on your wish list? They have some new items that are so nice. Do you own any Tiffany gold or just silver? Uh, I only own uh, Tiffany silver. I end up gravitating towards those, their silver quite a bit, especially because they have such great quality. Uh, and their Tiffany & Co. items that are on my wish list, there are actually two necklaces um, that I really like. The first one is an Atlas bar necklace. It's also in sterling silver, uh, but I think it's on a 16-inch chain or maybe there's a, maybe there's a way to adjust it. I'm not too sure. Uh, but kind of like the happy necklace that I've worn before, I just really like the way that it ends up catching the light. So the magpie in me loves that. <laughs> and there's another necklace that they have. Uh, it has a simple heart and it's also sterling silver and it has red enamel on one side and ster sterling silver on the other side. And you guys know my love for, for red. Red and I are like this. <laughs> so uh, those two um, I, I would really like to have in the, in, in the future. All right, next question from Shayna McGuire. I'm a tote person. I just learned that the totally in monogram is discontinued and has been replaced placed by the Yenna. Just wondering what your thoughts are on the Yenna as it's pretty different looking than the Totally. I do know that the, that the Totally is still an option in the other two prints, but my preference is Monogram. And hopefully I'm saying that correctly. And I, again, I will make sure and put a link on the description box below. Uh, now, the best way for me to describe uh, this bag is that I feel it's as though the Totally and the Neverfull had a baby. <laughs> it has uh, a very generous uh, com main compartment to it, uh, but it has the added security of a zip top closure, something that the Neverfull obviously doesn't have. So I think it's a really great option. It's a little bit bigger than the Totally is. So like I said, it's kind of a mix between both handbags and it does have very uh, comfortable straps as well. So if you like the Neverfull, but you don't like the fact that it doesn't have a zippered uh, compartment to it and you've been attracted, let's say to the Totally, then I think that the Yenna is a great option to go for. Um, but I checked it out at the boutique. And another thing that I really like about the bag is that it's very simple. It doesn't have too many bells and whistles. It's just a simple tote, throw your items in there. And again, very, very comfortable. So hopefully that was able to help. Uh, and the last question from Pam Snyder, how did you meet your husband? Uh, <laughs> I met Robert at work. Uh, he was higher up in the company than I was. And I'll be honest with you, <laughs> if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, a lot of you already know this story. Uh, um, he wouldn't give me the, <laughs> he wouldn't give me the time of day uh, because at our company um, or the company that I used to work for um, we weren't allowed to fraternize um, they wanted to make sure to keep uh, relationships you know outside of the workplace and whatnot which I fully understand uh, but sometimes you end up falling in love with people <laughs> and you can't help it uh, so he wouldn't <laughs> He wouldn't give me the time of day because he was so worried about the whole fraternize, um, being, you know, fraternizing with one another and the fact that he was also higher up in the company than I was. Uh, so he was very careful and then it just kind of, <laughs> we ended up just gravitating towards one another and, you know, the rest is history. And now we will be uh, married for 10 years this August. So I'm super, super excited about that. Uh, but anyways, that does it for Mix Monday Q&A. Um, thank you guys so so much for all of the wonderful questions. I hope I was able to help and give you guys some eye candy. Uh, and again, whenever I don't have the eye candy, I will always try to put it on the description box below so you guys can check it out. Because again, I know it's an inconvenience when I talk about handbags and I don't have something to reference it to. Uh, but I also want to take the time to uh, thank you guys so, so much from the bottom of my heart for all of the awesome feedback that I got on my my Valentine's Day unboxing video. I was just overwhelmed with happiness. I was grinning from ear to ear when I was reading your guys' comments and it really does mean the world to me. So thank you so much for that. Um, I'm really happy that you also enjoyed, <laughs> you you saw my giddiness. Like I said, I felt like a five-year-old on Christmas Day, um, you know, sharing, sharing these items with you guys. So anyways, I'm rambling. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, this week I have, I'm, I'm going to try to film as many videos as possible so you guys might see me maybe four or five times this week uh it all depends on <laughs> how my throat ends up uh, you know kind of uh 
being with me. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't end up just butchering my voice to the point where I can't talk. But again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.